Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Uh, Maridel and I are very pleased and honored to be here with you uh, today. And uh, we would like to talk about uh, the power of each of us and how we can uh, change the world and uh, face the many challenges we have. As Professor Yunus said, a world of a culture of peace and inclusive growth uh, are important to create a world of free zero. And peace is one of the main drivers to make that world a reality. Peace between people. Peace with nature. Peace with the future we want to build. And peace is also a very important topic for the business world. Now, let's hear uh, from Jimmy, who's going to tell us about one of his projects showcasing how peace is definitely important for corporation. Jimmy, please tell us more about your project One Step Forward. Yeah, sure. Uh, very nice uh, and very happy to be here. So, in few words, uh, One Step Forward uh, aims to support uh, refugees into their integration in the labor market. Uh, the objective is to link different entities who are unusual at the beginning, but uh, then they all go to the same direction to support uh, students, um, refugee students at the University of Luxembourg. And they are supported by employees of uh, BGL Ben Paribas. And all the group BNP Paribas are involved in this, uh, this action. Few data, few words you, you have to know. Uh, it's uh, now uh, 40 uh, people who are involved uh, and support by, uh, in the project. Um, and we have, uh, like, we start in 2018. Uh, we had COVID and uh, so he has stopped a bit and then uh, grow when it starts again. And what we can say, it's like 80% uh, of the students uh, who were looking for uh, a job uh, got uh, a job on the field they were uh, expected to do with the mentoring. Uh, in comparison, if you check uh, the people who did not have a mentoring programs, uh, they have to have another direction, I didn't get a job, and we are like more in around 5-10%. So um, the programs have a very impactful on the life of people, and this is, uh, this is the objective. You can see uh, a little journey on the, on the screen, uh, what, we, what we, we propose, so training, uh, mentorship, guidance, um, and the good thing is that uh, uh, employee can participate. Yeah. Okay. Um, nice. Uh, I have a first question for you, uh, Jimmy. Why is the project is important for you? Uh, the, the project is important for me, but I think for everyone. Um, it's a uh, help uh, to see the world in different perspectives. I think we all born with uh, advantage uh, in Luxembourg, in Italy, in France. We all have uh, uh, a chance uh, to live in very good condition, uh, have education and safe place. And um, now, I think, in our world, it's time to uh, maybe give it a bit back to people who uh, find themselves in a difficult situation in war zone or they become refugees. So. For me, it's very important to think that we are lucky. It's a bit of the lottery of the birth, and uh, we could uh, do something, not thinking always about our own uh, safety and plan and the personal, but we can give a bit back to the society. So by little step, uh, we can, I think, do more, and it's really artisanal. We start very step by step, and then it grow and grow and grow. One step forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Wonderful. The second question is, uh, what did the One Step Forward uh, change for you and around you? Um, around me, and for, for me, it's, it's life-changing uh, to do this project. I was doing a compliance investigation, so there is something very different. <laughs> and, uh, so it changed a lot. And around me, uh, first, when I start to explain my, uh, my project so to my manager and to people around me, to the COMEX, 
uh, they were all skeptical. Even for the students, they were saying, okay, you're from BNP Paribas, what, uh, what do you want exactly? And uh, they were all skeptical. And step by step, by uh, smiling, by giving confidence, uh, by uh, trust, I mean, uh, they, you start to see like uh, the people changing step by step. You start to see a smile, their understanding, and then you can uh, follow them to the journey and they become very successful, some of them. So it's very nice because some of them were working in wealth management in Ben Paribas, uh, in Price. And uh, so you can see that uh, by the aims to do something, you can, uh, you can yeah, support somebody without at the start saying where we gonna go, where we will go. So this, uh, it's very cool. Mm. And uh, the last question for this second says, what are you mostly proud of today and why? I'm uh, proud to be here with you. Huh? That's uh, very nice. And uh, no, I'm proud to, to, to have a team, uh, to get uh, involved, uh, to have more people involved and have a team inside Ben Pepariba, to create a team outside Ben Pepariba to involve a uh, university, uh, maybe not the first one, maybe more university, more people who go back, who go out to the university with uh, a very nice situation. And sometimes it's just like, uh, just come to pop up in my office and say, yeah, oh, super nice, now I'm doing that. So creating something, a movement, mm. who were not expecting at the beginning, is something very nice to see. Mm. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, and One Step Forward uh, was born in uh, 2018 and through our entrepreneurships program, the People's Lab for Good by BNP Paribas. Maribel and I uh, are involved in this program uh, and we are excited to be here on stage. And today we want to share about this fulfilling experience with you. A few words about each of us. I am Nathalie Cronier. I, am a, 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 I have a passion for curiosity. I am a natural lover and uh, I love cooking. And uh, what makes me so enthusiastic uh, about my work in the People's Lab uh, for Good is the feeling that every, every day we act for a better future. Wow, I feel a bit the same. Uh, I'm Maribel Mandana. Um, I'm a natural lover too. That's why I live in countryside. Uh, and I am an optimistic person. I, I think uh, if something matters for you, you can make it. So it makes me really happy when I see people becoming confident in themselves. Opportunities, taking control of their job to make good changing happens. Whatever they come from, whatever is their statue. That's why I love to work with people up for good. And I think you feel it, maybe you, yourself, When you hear Jimmy speaking, and you will feel it hearing Christine and uh, Emmanuel speaking too. So enough speaking of us. <laughs> May speak about People's Lab for Good. Uh, People's Lab for Good encourage employees to develop their entrepreneurship mindset, to serve the sustainable uh, development goals and their company goals. We have three values driving us every day. The first one is to be human-centric. That means to creating a caring and engaged com community by focusing on the individual natural skills, strengths and value of each one and by teaching people to speak with their hearts to create a crush. I hope you will have several crush today. The second value is the positive impact uh, business by providing solutions to problems uh, and that affect society and, uh, and the business by showing it's possible to innovate and develop, and develop positive impact solutions. And the last is the social, social transformation. By, new, by using new ways of working, The positive or negative impact is always added to the tools that we take the entrepreneur uh, through, such as uh, design thinking, business model, value proposition. 
and last but not least by inspiring employees who is the story of over social entrepreneurs and the culture of the solidarity economy. And 2022 landmark is our fifth anniversary, but we will celebrate in December. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo. laughs> yeah, a big party. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you will participate to uh, another birthday later. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what, what is People Sub for Good? Uh, it's a program which helps employees with uh, social and environmental uh, engagement who want to transform their own ID into a viable project having positive impact and business opportunity to the company. We already have 54% uh, of the projects still running after five years. You have some here. Uh, and five are social business or in the way to become uh, a social business. We have 85, uh, 87 sorry, entrepreneurs involved in the program since uh, five years. Uh, Um, we have 80% of entrepreneurs who confirm they are more engaged in the company because they understand more the value, the way it's working on how they can uh, contribute to the value they have and the company have. And uh, we have a large community involved, engaged to help this transformation in nine countries. So this is for us really important. Community is all because alone we don't know anything. We have to be many to do it. How we do that? <laughs> magic. Have, it's magic. You have some ingredients of the recipe with our value uh, because it's really important. Uh, we train and incubate uh, entrepreneurs for good with a variety of experience and a human approach. First thing, uh, we train them to develop art skill and to providing them tools to develop social projects. Second thing, we inspire them to unlock limited belief and to create connection. We offer them sharing time with an internal expert and with external ecosystem as a sustainable experts, social entrepreneurs, churches, etc. And the last uh, thing we provide, and really important thing, uh, it's providing time and space. It's really hard to get time and to get space, so this is really important for entrepreneurs to develop their idea and to take a step back when it's needed. And uh, why is time is so critical? One of the main issues uh, is to be soon over-focused uh, on, the, on the end solution, which means falling in love with the solution instead of the problem. Pinpointing the real problem does take time. Another pitfall is to remain linear in the, in the analysis of the problem when systemic analysis is key to the success and sustainability of the project. Beyond looking uh, at the positive impact of your project, you also need to think about its, its negative externalities on society, on biodiversity, on climate, on water, on anything belonging to this planet. Considering this, we all agree changing the world takes time. Let's have a pause and do something with Maribel. Yeah, let's do something together. Um, yeah, you are sitting in your chair, starving, <laughs> you want to eat, we know it. So let's play together. Um, I ask you to think about one of a project we are managing at the moment. It can be a personal one or a professional one like organizing a wedding or um, developing a platform, etc. Manage an event. Do you have it? Yeah, 
Everyone have it? Good. So now, we are taking a few minutes to think about social, economical, psychological, and ecological negative externality. Do you have the four? Social, psychological, economical, ecological. All right. That's okay? So, uh, I have to start my... Sorry, just a few minutes. Yeah, I'm timing you. Really? <laughs> mm, here and here. Are you ready? I can't hear you anyway. In my, <laughs> in my headphones. <laughs> okay. So, let's take two minutes. Ready? Go! Think about external. Negative externality from social, economical, ecological, and psychologic of your project to choose. You have to play because I'm asking question after. When you are ready, you can stand up. <laughs> okay, 20 seconds. And the winner will have a pink flower of Maribel. <laughs> Oh, my floor. <laughs> <laughs> I designed, uh, I checked somebody in the. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have one ready. I think it's time, everyone. Stand up. One, two, three, four. Wow. Good. Cool. First up. Nice. All right. You can sit down. Thank you very much. So now uh, you all were you will stand up again, no worries. <laughs> How many people have zero to five negative externality? Stand up. Okay. Okay, three, five to 10. Stand up. <laughs> One, good. Who have more? Oh, uh, you didn't do the exercises. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You can do it later. It's an exercise you can play later and do negative and uh, neg uh, positive externality. So, as we see, we have less than more. Uh, more of people have less than five e negative externality. I ensure you, if you do the exercise for more time with critical uh, regards of people you ask to other people to do it, you will have much more. So now you know some of negative externality, you can accept some of them. Because we know every living being have negative and positive externality. So that's okay to accept some, some of them because it's okay in the systemic balance. But for the other, you have to integrate it in your project roadmap and see when you can integrate it and by which way. And every time, do again this exercise to be sure to do not more negative externality. So this is really important. And it's, um, we did a really, really quick exercise with you for much more time in the program of People's Lab for Good. But now uh, what is important for us is having an honest early understanding of the externality of the project. And um, that's how the entrepreneurs uh, understanding it. And because entrepreneurs need to bring this 
vision, this knowledge to drive investors, partners in the way they make and they want to create business. So this is really important to carry this vision. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you, Maribel. <laughs> this second gave you a snapshot of the uh, People's Lab for Good experience. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as you can imagine now, uh, the world is full of meanders. Let's continue with, with Emmanuel uh, and her story. Emmanuel was a participant of the first cohort uh, five years ago. Emmanuel, tell us about more. Uh, tell us more about <laughs> your project called Tangata. Uh, thank you, Natalie. Um, well, the, the first thing is uh, why Tangata, which is a surprising name. Uh, in Maori, uh, Tangata is called Tangata Waikaha, which means those who have uh, um, different strengths, and it's a very positive way of seeing it. And um, my, my objective was to um, help people with disabilities to have a simple life. So we created two platforms, one which is Tangata Loisir, to facilitate their access to our leisure activities, and the other one, Tangata Emploi, to facilitate the employment uh, in, in companies. Could you tell us, uh, could you tell us about... Uh about your project journey since uh, 2018, Emmanuel? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I used to be at that time head of marketing in Cardiff, which was uh, our insurance company. And uh, we did a big market study uh, with our customers who, who fail in disability. I say fail because only 20% of um, people uh, born uh, or, or are disabled during their childhood. And 80% um, of uh, disability are invisible. And altogether, it's 12 million people in France, so quite a lot. Uh, and we realized that when it occurs, they don't know where to find solutions, um, and they are sometimes victims of uh, uh, their weaknesses. So um, we wanted to help them better because it's uh, our job as an insurer, and uh, not just give money. And um, well, people sub for good. You just uh, discovered was a, a great uh, accelerator. <laughs> And now, an important question. Um, can you explain the difficulty of combining business and social impact? Yes, it, it has been a huge difficulty for me. Um, in fact, when, when you're in a business-oriented company, it's quite easy to um, give money to NGOs, to invest in uh, startup projects with social issues and, uh, and things like that. You can also, uh, as a bank, uh, propose your customer to uh, um, make donation when they pay by card, lots of things. But to the opposite, when you start with a, a project without uh, any business model, just a, um, social impact in a private company, it's um, very difficult to, to transform it in, uh, in business uh, because you cannot charge unemployed people, you cannot charge uh, partners with very low margins. Personally, how do you live with uh, ups and downs, Russian mountains? <laughs> um, well, in, in fact, um, I, I like challenges uh, and... Um, as, as I was um, social oriented, but uh, uh, not uh, uh, not directly in business, I had to fight a lot uh, to uh, to attend uh, my uh, my objectives, uh, and um, it it hasn't been easy, but um, I learned uh, a lot, and even if now Tongata is in a bad posture. Uh, I, I also met a lot of people I could help and I could also translate what I learned to help their projects. And I also met Jimmy. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, why disability is uh, so important to pick today, um, Emmanuel? Um, there's still uh, enormous... Um, um, injustice for disabled people. It's very difficult for them to, to join our studies and very difficult for them 
to have um, a level of diploma which is uh, high enough and, and then very difficult to, to be uh, hired. Not all of them assume to say they are disabled and um, if they tell it, they have many helps within the company. If they don't, they have to fight daily. Um, and we haven't reached yet uh, what we uh, wanted to, um, to do. Uh, and I'm, I'm um, very uh, convinced that coalitions between um, private sectors, public sectors and citizens are the best way to do it. Uh, as far as um, uh, disabled people were concerned, we have a big uh, streamline, which is AGFIP in France, but they never wanted to, to work with us, who were a sort of speedboat and could uh, uh, solve problems. It didn't, um, but we couldn't match, in fact. Hmm. And uh, for the last question, uh, what would you do uh, differently today? Well, different things. Um, first of all, as I said, it's difficult to, uh, uh, to, to cope um, business and social when, when you try to start a social project without any business model in a private company. So maybe I should uh, start by helping NGOs already doing that or helping uh, entrepreneurs doing that, creating a, a social joint venture, for example, things like that. Um, second of all, I'm, I'm really um, convinced that uh, diversity is, uh, uh, is uh, something which uh, brings a lot uh, in um, in life and companies, uh, and and instead of working in silos like uh, uh, disabled people on one hand and uh, um, refugees or young people on the other hand, um, I, I would try to start by um, mixity and diversity mm. at the beginning. Totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Emmanuel, Thank for you. sharing your experience. After people's labs for good entrepreneurship story are never the same. Each one has his own path. Christine, maybe you can tell us about Tilia. Mm -hmm. um, your parent, your grandparent, are you worried, or worried about uh, their uh, well-being, well-aging? Yes? You are probably family caregivers. So today, um, we are living in a changing world, impacted by demographical changes. People uh, are living longer, aging population is growing, the number of people with disability is increasing too. The impact, the emergence um, of family caregivers. Half of them are still working. They need to um, um, continue to work. They juggle with uh, their professional and personal lives. It's very difficult for them. I was personally struggling with my older family member situation and one of my three sons suffer from dyslexia. Um, I'm working um, on BNP Paribas since uh, 20 years and five years ago I had the chance to uh, participate to an entrepreneur program. And um, I saw how it was time consuming and stressful to uh, assume this family caregiver role. It's the reason why I developed Tilia with my team. We had the opportunity to create this new company to uh, help employees in BNP Paribas, but not also. And I will uh, share more after. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. So why did you choose to create your own unit in the group? Um, we started um, after incubation. We started with uh, a business unit. Uh, during six months, but we created um, um, a subsidiary of BNP Paribas Personal Finance uh, because it was uh, easier for us to um, market our offer. To um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not <laughs> so comfortable in English, so I, I, I want to, uh, to uh, deliver the, the right message, so I, I will read. Um, because Tilia is not a core business activity of BNP Paribas, uh, I need to um, develop uh, this dedicated structure to, um, for tax reason, um, financial uh, arrangement, and um, we, we think that it's the better way to um, 
um, isolate, I don't know, the, the activity to uh, develop our service um, and to better focus on uh, our um, um, objective. Um, the management uh, of BNP Paribas Personal Finance has a um, very ambitious um, um, goal and uh, in terms of uh, business uh, plan. Um, and as Emmanuel said, when you are a social business and you need to have um, revenue, it's very complicated. It's the reason why we develop uh, outside the, the group, in fact, this startup. And uh, so this allow you to, to fix that point? What, what allow you to, to, to do that uh, unit? Um, first, my, my ambition was uh, as Emmanuel um, because we are concerned, we, we, are, um, we want to act to help other people who live the same situation, disability, vulnerability of, of, of a loved one. And um, we, my first ambition was to help them. Colleagues like me in BNP Paribas live the same situation, but not also. Uh, my vision was... Um, in a beyond banking approach to um, help our client facing to vulnerability too. And it's the reason why it was very important to um, uh, develop outside the group. Our first uh, customer was uh, NG, uh, SAP, EDF. Um, it was really important to uh, prove our quality, our, um, our um, quality of service, our um, utility and uh, creating um, our own structure uh, allow us uh, to quickly uh, time to market and to widely uh, target other employees, other caregivers in other company. Thank you. Uh, we know there is always opportunities and difficulties, so what is yours? Yes, as a, an entrepreneur project, it was um, yes a lot of advantage because uh, I, I know the, the chance that we have to develop inside a big group as BNP Paribas. Um, so um, it's a great chance, but we have uh, also a lot of constraints. Um, for instance, um, advantage because we have financial um, resources, uh, material support. Um, I had um, the chance to have uh, with me uh, eight uh, people in my team and uh, with a complementary skill, so it's uh, uh, very rich. But um, and we have the um, dexterity and reactivity of a startup inside a big group, so it's uh, it's uh, really great. But um, as Emmanuel said, the same difficulty. Uh, and as Jimmy said too, uh, to convince inside the group, our uh, COMEX, that uh, our project is relevant, um, that we have a, a role to play to help our employees, our customers. So um, I, I always keep my vision. Um, so perhaps I can add that um, in a social, we act in a social sphere, uh, and in France, all, service, uh, all social services are free. So when you want to charge your uh, service in a other company, um, it's difficult to uh, because you are always compared to the public uh, service. And um, perhaps uh, to finish that, um, um, uh, because we are inside the group, uh, and in fact, in a, in a bank, uh, we didn't have any subsidies, uh, external subsidies, and uh, we have a lot of um, difficult uh, rules uh, inside. Um, for instance, compliance, security, IT, uh, etc. More restrictive than uh, other startups, in fact. Thank you. A lot of opportunities, but some also difficulties we have. So that's also the entrepreneurship road. So entrepreneur and entrepreneur have the same difficulties, I think. So, uh, Last question. What will be your advice uh, for people here who may want to do entrepreneurship for good? Uh, 
So I, I will short. Uh, our world is changing. Uh, in our big company, we have all a role to play and uh, be aware that everyone can act for impact. Um, as an entrepreneur, um, I think that uh, we are um, useful. We, we, we have uh, the mean to act. And um, I will definitely recommend to be uh, curious, bold, stay resilient and um, just uh, believe in your ID, uh, keep your uh, uh, vision and um, stay resilient. We have all a role to play. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. Uh, the power of each of us. Yes, we can. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Uh, let's go back to Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, what is your professional uh, situation today? Um, but today, uh, yeah, changed a lot. Um, so I um, I create a, a, an NGO in Luxembourg, who's called Singa, uh, Singa Luxembourg. Uh, Singa it's uh, an NGO uh, established uh, in 10 countries, uh, 20 cities. Uh, the aims of Singa is to support entrepreneurs, to support, uh, to have a, a startup vision, to see how we can uh, uh, support newcomers and as well locals. And you will understand why I'm talking about locals a bit later. And uh, of course, I'm part of uh, Ben Pepariba, uh, the compliance uh, officer uh, department. And uh, now in the University of Luxembourg, uh, I'm inclusion specialist. So. Talking about enfin, doing projects, especially uh, in research about interculturality and uh, and uh, inclusion for refugees and other uh, other students. So that's uh, the path uh, I I am now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super. Bravo, bravo, Jimmy. Yes. <laughs> What was the trigger triggering event? Uh, the triggering event was to to be uh, uh, to have more times because uh, at the uh, at the time, not so long time ago, I was doing all three at the same time. Um, but uh, thanks to Claudia, thanks to to the Comex who accept uh, all this, I, I can uh, I've been detached, and uh, now I'm working on those projects uh, to involve people inside the group. And as well, uh, I have a consultancy uh, with Grameen, so it's, it changed a lot uh, the approach. And it changed a lot as well the business model and the f where we, will, uh, we are uh, working. Okay. Um, I have a last question for you. What is the connection between Singa and the bank? Uh, what does it involve? And uh, what are your aspirations for the next year to come? Um, the connection with uh, Singa and the bank is to involve employees because um, from my experience I realize that uh, uh, people want to, to have more space and do something uh, um, concrete uh, and have some uh, action, direct action. And when you don't meet each other, we do not see the value. So now uh, I'm connecting Singa to, uh, with the bank to support employees. So now it's part of our mission to do team building and see talents, who, uh, what they want to do, if they want to participate uh, in different sites. And as well, um, it's uh, involving the CSR in the department CSR to, yeah, to, to have more impact. Uh, so now it changed because we have a lot of connection with uh, uh, Grameen Creative Lab. So now we have, uh, we, we have the consultancy, so it gives us uh, a way where we should go and the swift and, and if we are in the right direction. So all this uh, makes uh, yeah, the link with Singa. So one step forward, it's inside, uh, it's an umbrella, let's say, for the financial uh, people or in the in the audience um, and all this is linked, connected and uh, we are looking for more people, uh, more people to join us even if they are not in Luxembourg so because we are uh, launching a, a platform uh, uh, online dedicated to people who have uh, one day, two days to, to, to get involved. Yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, I know you keep uh, a reflex uh, call to action. Yeah, call to action. Yes. Uh, if you, I already <laughs> talked yesterday, but uh, now there is more people. So uh, just, uh, just give a shot and come and uh, we can talk about it. And, uh, and yeah, I think everybody should, uh, should help because sometimes we think uh, all we have is due and we should give back a bit to the society, have the positive impact. Even if you are driven by uh, other, other things, we can keep a, a little time. Yes, we have so much privilege. Thank you, Jimmy. You're welcome. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Maria, to be here with us. Uh, we, have a ve we are very proud uh, to be here and to have uh, a partnership with uh, a Grameen Creative Lab, uh, which is uh, a gateway for after people sleep for good for the entrepreneurs. Um, and Maria, um, you know each one of the entrepreneurs here. You know all the difficulties it can be, all the way uh, they have to go to become a social business. So could you tell us more uh, about what you do and your experience? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, maybe I, I, I do like a, a bit of context because I joined the Grammy Creative Lab just two years ago. Uh, so I didn't have the chance to meet you during your accompaniment with the Grammy Creative Lab. I was myself an unofficial entrepreneur in my previous company. It was a multinational company as well. Um, and that's where I realized with COVID that I was doing so much that I wanted to, like, to create a bridge between companies and uh, entrepreneurs. So when I joined the Grammy Creative Lab and this partnership uh, was there already, I was like, okay, this is really, uh, this is really great. Uh, what we do at the Grameen Creative Lab, we, as you notice in this event, we kind of like connect the ecosystem of social business around Professor Yunus. So the ecosystem word is really like uh, important for us. Um, and within the work that we do, we accelerate social businesses. And the, the contribution that we give most is we take the experience that we have from all the different, uh, from the network, from accelerating social businesses, and we contribute it into these accompaniment. We call it more accompaniment because it's not really, com it's not really incubation, it's not really consulting, but it's really accompanying because then the entrepreneur himself, herself, is the, the, the one that is really like uh, taking forward uh, their own, uh, their own uh, social business or their own project. Um, it changed a bit the way we approach it, especially like uh, when I joined the lab, I saw that there was a methodology in place, um, which was somehow like static. But with things changing fast, uh, we adapted the methodology in a way that we accompany the projects in a way which is ad hoc to the entrepreneur, to the context that uh, he or she is, uh, is, is living in and to the different uh, situation. Um, and then, of course, like what we did this year is really try to involve more also the entrepreneurs in the ecosystem. Because one thing is the, and I think like what BMP Paribas does is this unique platform, because it's really true that when you are an entrepreneur in a company, you, you are alone. You're struggling between your job and your passion, but your job is what gives you the money so you end up working at night on your personal project or like uh, in the weekends uh, and that becomes hard then to to handle so when you have a support platform like people up for good a special problem that gives you the time to work on your project uh, that gives you the network inside the group it's already a big step the next step is then taking uh, inspiration and views from the outside as well so connecting to external ecosystems as well and that's where we come maybe also uh, more in uh, in place Thank you, uh, Maria. Uh, do you have uh, any uh, advice, recommendation, or, or on the on the work in uh, yeah. in, uh, in general? Um, uh, I think like uh, what um, what is very important is always, of course, the the motivation. So uh, we had, for example, like uh, projects on the way um, where you where you really believe in it, even despite despite all the difficulties. 
you're going to take it forward. Then, of course, other externalities, as you said, like come into the way. The economic externalities, uh, how do you get the funds? So the fact that in the group you have different structures to which you can go to uh, to get funding, for example, this has been very nice for uh, many social businesses uh, that uh, got incubated inside the group, but it can also be a, a big challenge because of all the regulations inside the company. So uh, uh, there's uh, always like externalities to take into, into consideration. Um, one thing also is that to focus less on having the perfect product, but start small steps. So rather than just going straight to, I need to really crack that social business model that is going to allow me to become like immediately uh, sustainable, etc. It's more like small steps, test a lot, and uh, work work like uh, in small steps. Exactly. We really we. Because it's come from the earth, uh, and uh, entrepreneurs want to to join their mission where they want to go, so they want to go far away. But uh, as you say, and as say Professor Yunus, you have to do s small step. Because if you don't do small steps and accept to don't have everything right now, you will not go anywhere so that's really important thank you for the sharing maria um thank you everyone thank you uh it's time for the hand now uh thank you to all of you to sharing your uh, experience your amazing stories again <laughs> and uh, i think now you feel this energy coming for entrepreneur for good on what we feel every day in People's Lab for Good and I think in the Grameen Creative Lab too. Uh, so we are happy to share this energy with you.